Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Hmm, I see. So, Jane, what you do here, in effect, is count boners. This is episode 202, recorded March 21st, 2022. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host, Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. All right, on this podcast, what we usually do is start off with some basic details go into some first impressions and then uh, what you know whatever interests us we just take off but first let's introduce the my crewmates uh, joining me tonight is crystal cleveland the living dead girl and co-host of the gruesome magazine podcast how are you crystal i it's weird i i feel like i'm in a dream because i feel like we've done this before i don't know why maybe it's just deja vu all over again <laughs> It is, as a matter of fact. (laughs) Also joining us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist, co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era, Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Chad, how are you? Well, you ever go to sleep and like in the afternoon and you wake up and you feel like, oh my God, I'm late for work. (laughs) Yeah. That's how I, that's exactly how I feel right now, but I'm, Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'll keep waking up, and here we are doing Dreamscape. Yep. At Deja Vu all over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, last but not least is Bill Mulligan. <laughs> I feel like I just We're, heard that. It is Deja Vu. Writer <laughs> and director and special effects guru and co-host of Decades of War of the 1970s. Bill, how are you? I'm doing fine. You know, Chad, I've had that dream, too. Only you were in it, and we were both sitting on a unicorn, and we rode it right into a train tunnel. That oh. was no dream. Okay, well, you oh. know, you probably shouldn't say you're both sitting on a unicorn to Witcher fans because that means sex. I want to know what part of the unicorn <laughs> you're sitting well, on. You don't know Bill very well, do you? I thought you? that was heavily implied, but yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. For, for, I didn't for know myself you out there when it first started. but I wondering what we were doing. I screwed up. We recorded this a week ago, and I screwed it up. So we're back. <laughs> womp, recording womp, again. Womp. That's uh, fine. So all the spontaneity is just gone now. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it was a week ago. We forgot. We could tell all the oh, f- jokes. Forgot what I had for breakfast this morning. Yeah. So no problem. <laughs> yeah, me too. Hmm. So our topic this week is Dreamscape from 1984, directed by Joseph Rubin, written by David Lowry, Chuck Russell, and Joseph Rubin, uh, from a story by David Lowry, cast. Includes Dennis Quaid, Kate Quaid. Capshaw. Did I say that wrong? <laughs> no, it, it's it's it, a different movie. <laughs> maybe it's Porter. Quaid. Quaid. Yeah. Quaid. Mm-hmm. Quader Mass. Huh? Um, Again, all right. So uh, where was I? Dennis Quaid, mm-hmm. Kate Capshaw, Max von Sydow, Christopher Plummer, Eddie Albert, and a host of others. Lest we not forget George Wendt. All right. Filming locations for uh, Dreamscape were the Bronson Caves in Bronson Canyon, Los Alamitos Racetrack. There's a, a kind of an opening scene, a couple of scenes there, and then uh, various other Southern California locations. It was released on August 17th, 1984. A couple of uh, AKAs, just because I kind of like the way they sound. The German translation, the German title was Elisha Träume. Holy shit, dreams what? of hell. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, trauma. Yeah, dreams of hell. And then El Escape de los Sueños. 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 Uh, yeah. Which was Mexican, I believe, translates to escape from dreams. So <laughs> I think they were escaping into dreams, but okay. There's another one too. It's it's called Quaid, which is Quaid. Australian. <laughs> Quaid. <laughs> it's a. Uh... All right, I'm, I'm, you'll have to point this uh, connection out to me later. Um, there is one. Not, there's no connection. Oh. It's just very tired. <laughs> so the budget 
The budget for Dreamscape is was listed at five million, but I also heard six million. Who knows? Yeah. And the What's box office was twelve point one million, but then Four? I heard the director say, or the producer say, it made twenty five million. So you know, I, I, uh, I know Hollywood accounting. Are. Yes, yes, and a short synopsis: a man, Wade. Ah! <laughs> Good, yeah, yeah. A man who can enter and manipulate people's dreams is recruited by a government agency to help cure the president of the United States of his nightmares about nuclear war, but stumbles upon an assassination plot. Ooh, he didn't spooky. really stumble. He he fell completely. Yeah, yeah. I, li- I like how they got that. They they manipulated that all into one sentence with no commas. Yeah, that's yeah, impressive. But he also yeah. wasn't. He wasn't recruited to cure the president. That was not. No, no, he wasn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's technically not a true synopsis, but it's a good synopsis. Well, uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. he was supposed to cure the president in the end, but it really was about an assassination plot. So anyway, uh, so there's there's uh, Dennis Quaid, aka Alex Gardner, in the show with his. Uh, I don't know. I I. I still don't get the electrode attached to the chin. The chin yeah, uh, it's the, uh, the leftover effect, makeup effect thing from uh, Exorcist Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah okay. Well, thank God they didn't show him attaching the one, the attachment for the boner count. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> so let's. Get Hold on, the... I can tell you how many I got. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Zero, but enough lines. of my problems. Tag lines. <laughs> And uh, oh, yeah. taglines. Okay, so for this one, we're going to do a little bit of improv role playing. We've had many requests for more uh, improv on this show. So yeah. I'm going to be, yes, I'm going to be the crusty but <laughs> lovable producer. I'm like, really? And uh, emphasis you, on crusty. Chad, yeah, you, Chad, are the young up and coming uh, tagline writer. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm, I'm, <clears throat> let me you get in character. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't forget your stogie. stogie. Don't forget my stogie. Kid, I've heard good things about you. They say you're the best. A real up and comer. A real go getter. Now we've got this movie coming out, Dreamscape. Hell of a cast. Hell of a cast. But kind of a little weird. It's that science fiction stuff that the kids love. Don't get it. Tell me what you got. How do we put asses in seats? Hit me with your best shot. Okay, okay. Are you ready? Sit down, because these are going to blow your friggin' mind, okay? You sitting? Okay, sitting. listen. Listen. Close your eyes, and the adventure begins. Oh, that, that's yeah, what I tell my it. wife every night. That was a tagline? No, no. <laughs> oh I thought you were just telling me to wait for... Give me something good. Oh, my God. Kyle, you're fired! Okay, here we go. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, wait, that was, oh, no, go, go. No, okay, here we go. Here's the yeah. second one. You ready? It, it takes an extraordinary adventurer to enter the dot, dot, dot. The dot, dot, dot. What the hell is the dot, dot, dot? I don't know. I just watched oh, you the mean series of the other night. And it's, ah, yeah. Interesting. No, I don't like it. Next. No, oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. Here, here we go. Enter a world beyond your wildest imagination where anything can happen. Quaid! I like that one. I liked it the other 50 times we've used it. That's the oldest one ever. Give me something fresh and original. Uh, Oh, God. Okay. All right. I got got more. I got more. Okay. Whatever goes on in your dreams is no longer for your eyes only. I think that's the name of a James Bond movie. We're going to get sued. No, no, no. I got that on the back of an Afrin box. Yeah. Okay. Whatever goes on in your dreams... Oh, wait, I did that one already. Did you like that one? No. Okay, 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 okay. Listen, listen, listen. This is beyond your wildest nightmare. Yeah, that's one of the taglines. Not this meeting, but this is the tagline. Yeah, it's just uh, like the other one. These don't sing to me. Make them sing. Okay. He's the first mind traveler. But can he survive the demons of nightmare warfare? So that's that's like singing it. for you. It's you catchy. Like that one? It's catchy. Yeah, you can yeah, you can dance yeah. to it. It's yeah. not going to look good on the poster. Yeah. It, yeah, it would take up a lot of room on the poster. All right, all right. Come on, come on. I, okay, this is, okay. This listen. Is Stop Ooh. drilling. You're about to hit oil. Go. Uh, well, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Who in hell has peace of mind? 
Well, okay, let's not get angry and belligerent here. I'm, I'm just trying no, to no, work with you. No, that's what? a tagline. That's it's a tagline? one of my taglines. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, it's, I might scare people away from the theater, but uh, so okay, just okay. Let's keep going. Uh, calm okay. down. Okay, listen, listen, listen. This is listen. this is the granddaddy of them all. Okay, all right. Alex Gardner has an extraordinary gift. The government wants it. The scientists want it to keep it. It may cost him his life. What do you think? Is that the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. Yeah, let's go with it. Fantastic. Kyle, print it. Yay. Yay. Okay. I'd like to accept this Academy Award for send requests for more improvisations to <laughs> Bill and Chad and no, no, or or request that we never do anything like that again. We'll we'll take either one. We're just well, that was yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Fun. yeah. I'm sure I'm sure uh, Jerry will have something to say about that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. We're, we're it's raining. Jerry's got something to say. All right. Well, here's here's the poster, which looks. Amazingly, like another movie that came out in 1984. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Which also Indiana had Jay Capshaw. Well, Doom. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great poster. It, it they've they've shrunk the name of the movie into almost invisibility, and uh, yeah. it's not really indicative at all of what you're getting. But that is a poster that would look good on the wall and yep. would probably get me to a theater. Yep. Well, we get that. We get the that's crazy another. Scare that's case. another meeting where they said. Make it look like Indiana Jones. Yeah. You get the other right hand side him there. You get a... the uh, you get the crazy staircase. You get the glowing nun some... nunchucks. Uh, we got some wolves with shiny eyes. Yeah, yeah. But the center picture, Christopher Plummer I... looking like a bad guy, which you know. Or just You're right. Looks like when, Christopher Plummer. When was when was uh, Alex Gardner holding that flare? Oh, the yeah, it was toward the end. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that kid boy. That boy kid. That kid boy. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys. I look, I, look right. I love posters like that more than I like the posters that come out now. Oh are, yeah, you know, me too. Just two faces looking at each other. One it's just to me, this steel. is like uh almost Tissues. too there's too much there. The, like, it's busy. You gotta you gotta get close to really see what the the details are. Oh, well, I, I think they, they made it to look it. like an adventure. Yeah, but this, that's this right. my biggest an adventure thing. movie, and mm -hmm. it didn't really. Uh, um, I don't know. It didn't come up. It didn't have the budget to be the right. <laughs> what what's represented in the poster? So apparently, I mean, you the, say the, dreams. It could, dreams could be Game of Thrones. It could be yeah. something super elaborate, or it can be you in front of a green screen that you know. I mean, so apparently granted, they chose granted the, all these things happened in the movie, but... They, um, they chose the taglines, enter the world beyond your wildest imagination where anything yeah. can happen, or close your eyes, close your eyes and the adventure begins. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to first impressions. Mr. Bill, this was your pick. Oh, yes. No. Correct? Ooh. Yes, it was. It was. I stole it from chat. Um... <laughs> Because I remember this fondly, I I saw it when it came out. Um, this would have been, I would have been home from college, and you know, hanging out with my friends, talking about my adventures, you know, in, back in college, and and uh, we went out to see a lot of movies. There wasn't a whole lot else to do in upstate New York, so we saw a lot of stuff when they first came out in those those four years there. And I remember liking it quite a bit. I remember seeing uh, the stuff in Fangoria and the ads. I love the glowing nunchucks. I mean, they. They made it look pretty cool. And, okay, so, you know, we, there's always a chance when we do these films, we go back and see something we saw back in the day. It can be a little bit of a disappointment or, you know, sometimes sometimes we see stuff, appreciate it more than we did before. Well, this one kind of falls in, in the former. It it doesn't hold up the way I hoped it did. The, the cheapness of it... Um, kind of holds it back a bit it's it's got charm i feel like there's a lot of lost opportunities that they could have gone way further with this and done a whole lot more you know that this is a big concept it's tonally a little odd it 
it shifts from one thing to another. We suddenly go into a, a comedy bit with the guy who's, you know, afraid his wife is having an affair. It's amusing, but you know, it seems a little out of place in this movie where we've got nuclear war and and I guess the other thing is now that I've watched a gazillion movies where, you know, the military industrial complex of the bad guys and it's obvious from the first time you meet them who the bad guy is. It's it seems pretty formulaic. In, in fairness, this is an old enough movie that there probably wasn't that much of a formula back then. But this is the kind of formula that they use now. So it, it doesn't hold up as well as, as I'd hoped. And I, I would actually like to see a remake of this. I think they'd probably screw it up with too much CGI because I think the low effect, the low fi effects here are actually kind of cool and more what a dream is than having it suddenly go all crazy pants. But I, it still has a lot of charm. It's got a great cast. I mean, they won't be able to repeat the cast, unfortunately. And that, that carries you along. It's a eighties. It's a low budget eighties sci-fi movie. Take it for what it's worth. It, it does make me worry a little bit. A movie that I'm, I'm sort of hoping we'll do at some point in the future is The Last Starfighter, which is probably yeah. I haven't seen yeah. for about as long as I haven't seen this one. And I have a great deal of fondness for, and I'm kind of wondering if that's going to hold up better than this did. Um, but you know what? Listen, this is not a bad movie. It's it's an entertaining movie. I wasn't bored. so, But not quite what I was hoping for. Sometimes okay. you back again. Well, let's talk to it. Okay, so is the last Starfighter actually horror? Because no, but neither horror. is this really. I mean, yeah. see, I think this is a horror because there's yeah, I guess that, it's got, yeah, and then it's got like that snake creature, and that's why I'm saying I think that they the the whole thing, like Chad was saying with the poster, I think it was marketed incorrectly, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. But so no, I think you're right, I though. always love this movie, and I still think it holds up it's i know um i mean the effects are what they are but it's no different from mm. any other sure. 80s movie i've seen i love the snake dude he's so scary yeah. i love the actors i mean everyone does a great job is there some silly things in the story yeah but at least there's a concrete story here you get it you play along dennis quaid's really funny I mean, it's. I like the supernatural aspect of it all. Mm -hmm. I like the dude who plays the president. And it's like, it's oh, yeah. just a good time. It's just a good time with horror. Like, it's not too intense. But I love how they did, like, you know, the red filter or whatever they used for the dream sequences right. and mm -hmm. stuff. I, I just, I think it still holds up because... It's it's not that bad. I've just seen so much bad. This is like okay, right? I mean, it is still eighties. I don't. I, there's very few eighties movies where I go whoa, like The Thing, obviously. <laughs> like sure. yeah, some of the Alien movies. Like I mean, there's some that are just. Psh, this isn't to that level, obviously. This is a popcorn movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong with that. But it's still yeah. fun, and mm -hmm. uh, I wa I've, I've watched it as a kid, and I've watched it just like, uh, now it's like, I guess it was sometime last year. So I've seen it even recently, before this time. And I I don't know, I always enjoy it when I watch it. So, for me... You don't need to justify enjoying anything. I'm, uh, yeah. You know, it, yeah. You know, I get okay. it. I liked it. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, Mr. Hunt, how about you? Um, I watched this in the theater when it first came out and, um, just remember, I loved it. I loved it. And having watched it now, uh, the effects might not hold up, but uh, like it did back then, but watching it at the time it came out, this is what a low budget sci-fi fantasy type movie looked like, you know? You had the the matted lines around the people, you know, when with the weird yeah. backgrounds in the back. You had that's what that's what things look like back then. It might not hold up very well for somebody who's just watching it for the first time, and they go, "Oh, this is crap." But watching it then, you really it was good. I really really love this movie, and it's it had a lot of elements in it um, that. I really love too. It had Nightmare on Elm Street vibes, it had Star Wars vibes. Um, 
it just had a lot going on in it that borrowed from other other genres but or in other movies but but um I've always loved this movie from the beginning, uh, from the first time I saw it. And, and yeah, even though it doesn't hold up, it's still a fun watch. It's still fun because I think the story is so good and so intriguing. Um, you know, and at that time, um, we haven't really had anything. I think the first Nightmare movie came out. But so we've had many, many, many Nightmare on Elm Street movies after this that dealt with dreams and nightmares and, and things like that so so yeah it's easy to go back and not give it its due because of, of the things we've seen after that came after it but um great acting great cast great cast mm -hmm. max von Sydow, come on mm -hmm. and um you know eddie albert and 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 christopher Plummer. i mean you know that's that's an a-list cast you know that's an a-list right. cast so yeah, it's it's a it's fun. It's it's I love the effects. I love the bad guy, mm -hmm. but the bad guy is is amazingly bad. I mean, not bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he's evil, evil bad. Yeah. You know. So um, yeah, I love it. Still love watching it today. Yeah, I I think I may be a little closer to uh, Crystal. I don't I don't see a problem with the effects because it's kind of what I expect from. 1984 with the exception of super movies like the thing you know just mm -hmm. most other stuff and i you know i should probably go back and look at some of those and see them but a lot of the stuff we do has a lot of practical effects so you're not going to see the blue screen matte effects mm -hmm. you know not coming through so i don't know um i like this a lot and in fact i enjoyed watching it the extra time because that was a week ago and i have total no recall so i have to <laughs> had to watch it again and i i enjoyed it i enjoy it um the one thing the one con i have of this is uh dennis quaid's you know kind of lady killer smile where you kind of expect his oh yeah here we go his teeth to <laughs> glint, you know? I'm, I'm probably just jealous but <sighs> uh, you know it's just a little he's just he's just a little too cute or something. I don't know. He can't help um, it. He's just naturally uh, he is. cute. He is. He's, and he's still got that smile. You know, and that works for the movie, too, because otherwise, you know, he, he's kind of a... It starts out he's kind of a slacker. I don't know. Hey. You know, he, he, he like like Han mm -hmm. Solo, like Harrison Ford, no matter what he does, you're going to like him because he's... You know, unless yeah. they make him into a serial child killer, you're going to root for Dennis Quaid. Uh and Jeff says the same thing about me. You know, I'd like Chad and all, but he's too cute. Aww. Right. That lady killer smile. I don't, I don't like yeah. being seen with him because it's, it's. So I try not to uh, smile oh, it's a lot around Jeff. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, oh, I, when you're around Chad, it's like those old high yeah, karate ads, you know, <laughs> women just throwing themselves at him and fighting him off. So anyway. <laughs> I've just totally dated myself there. <laughs> I like it. I like the story. I like the cast. Uh, the cast is awesome. The effects, I enjoy the effects i thought they were pretty decent for the time and and you know my nightmares don't look like that they're like nightmarish things happening in a realistic kind of world but hey you know you get to do what you want to in a dream world i think um, mine always involved math class oh and chat on a unicorn but that's just the common yeah. theme for all of them yep <laughs> happiness not a reality <laughs> What math class? <laughs> I, I, I both. I still want to hear what part of the unicorn you were sitting on, but I. Well, oh, well, uh, wow, wow. Uh, okay. So yeah, what? There this we go. Low That's where your mind goes. This right. is directed by Joseph Rubin, who we just did one not too long ago, directed by him, the stepfather. Mm -hmm. and, totally different uh, we, film. Yeah, we remarked then that he seemed like. He kind of morphed into the dysfunctional family horror movie uh, motif because mm. after uh, Stepfather, then he did Sleeping with the Enemy, The Good Son, mm. um, The Forgotten, Blindsided as a kind of a nasty one, Money Train. Mm. Now, he did another movie, at least one other movie with uh, Dennis Quaid called Our Winning Season in 1978. 
Uh, so he was he was familiar. They were familiar with each other. So I don't know. I don't think he's the kind of guy that has any big earmarks or anything. I right. Didn't. It's not a. And even Anybody... even the thing about the uh, the family stuff, unless he wrote the scripts for all those, I don't know that that's. Oh, they're coming to get me. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it's been a good run. There wasn't yeah. anything visually uh, exciting about uh, the stepfather or, or a lot of those other mm -hmm. movies, but this one he. Um, he got a chance to kind of play with all these effects and stuff yeah. like that. So, mm -hmm. but and I thought I thought he did a pretty good job with it. You know, I like I actually like the effects. You know, one of the things that might kind of color this in my eyes is for another podcast. I just watched um, Altered States, which oh. also has dream sequences. Oh, yeah. Now those mm -hmm. those dream sequences are crazy pants as only Ken Russell can can do. Um, Two crazy um, pants references already this podcast. Yeah. So Wait, I wasn't it William play. Hurt in that? Yeah, oh, yeah. Aww, William Hurt. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's that's it's why they wanted to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and but in both cases, it's interesting because in both those movies, the um, the effects are kept very deliberately, kind of low tech. Like they're not trying to avoid the mm -hmm. the halo effect from the bad blue screen. It's deliberate, and I kind of like that because I don't I don't really visualize my dreams as vividly as I wish I could to remember them but what i remember about them we're not talking harry house and effects here we're, we're you know my dreams are fairly low budget it's all about the plot so um i like that i, I like the the effect that that things didn't look real they're not real they're a dream yeah and how do you how do you get that across well you know bad special effects they're not bad they're they're what they're meant to be so i i think that's fine in fact i think it, when they do remake this, and again, this is one of those that I'm kind of shocked they haven't remade. It just, yeah, me too. Because it feels like we're closer to this being a reality. The you know you don't mm -hmm. need um, mutant psychics now to to imagine getting into people's well, dreams. I think we're probably pretty close to doing this. And mm. nuclear war has become much more topical. Oh, uh, that that one just <laughs> never goes away, does it? Yeah. So. Uh, well, so what about the writing? We talked a little bit about that. Uh, before, but we've got uh, pretty Chuck Russell. Um, Chuck Russell, he he went on to do some cool things. Joseph like Rubin and Russell. David Lowry. So yeah, Chuck Russell did what? Uh, the Blob. The Blob. The Blob. He did a Nightmare on Elm Street. Three or Three two lawyers. Yeah, two Three lawyers. Uh, Three more. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen Chuck Russell do this. I think that might have been a little more yeah. visually interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. He's apparently in pre-production on Witchboard. Oh, hmm. another like a, a, a there remake or something? A, yeah, I don't that's know. what I'm wondering. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Chuck uh, Russell is someone I wish did more movies. It's just that unfortunately, some yeah, the, the Blob yeah. was such a good movie and just did not do well, hmm. and that that can kill you. One of the best remakes ever. Oh yeah. Truth. So, uh, David Lowry who did the original story and then had screenwriter credit has done some other movies that uh, Joseph Rubin directed, which I mentioned before blindsided and money train, but he also got into these dark ones, Lakeview terrace uh, hmm. obsessed, I think is the one with, uh, no, that's not the one that has Idris Elba, Beyonce and Ali Lur. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, where's the one I was passenger 57. Wesley Snipes. Yep. So he's gone on to yep. some good stuff. Okay. And uh, Lakeview Terrace. Oh, that's a uh, Samuel, Samuel Sam Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Patrick yeah. Wilson. Yeah. That was a good movie. That was a good movie, too. I mean, like I said, so, yeah. they could have done more with this, but with a six, five or six million dollar budget, there's only so much you can do. Mm -hmm. Especially when you've, you've obviously dropped some coin on a good cast. This is, this is way above the usual well, sci fi movie 1980s. Uh, cast here mm -hmm. and i mentioned it twice blindsided which is uh also which is written by lowry and directed by joseph rubin was originally released as penthouse north which is what i remember it as michael keaton um who else is in that michelle monahan i don't recognize the other ones but michael keaton was the uh he was uh, yeah nasty. i remember that yeah, yeah. i remember that Sadistic criminal looking for hit. So anyway, 
Um, so yeah, and, and I felt like this story was very episodic in terms of we start off almost like it, you know, I don't want to rub Bill the wrong way, but it reminded me a little bit of he Dead might Zone, like it of Dead what? Zone because we had these little <laughs> had little escapades or little little episodes where we were learning about the dream powers, right? Mm -hmm. So we start off with he's got this. We know he can predict races, right? We know that he used to do a study with uh, Dr. Novotny, Max von Sydow, but he left it, and now he's he's just sort of hustling. Uh, he's got all these girlfriends on the line, and yeah. he's uh, winning money at the at the racetrack. Which uh, you know, again, so the whole premise is silly because if you had the ability to pick, you know, winners at the racetrack. You wouldn't have to live at the racetrack. You could go there and over the course of one exactly. weekend mm -hmm. be richer than Cretius. I mean, right. you, you'd just be loaded with dough. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't have these stereotypical gangster types with their funny looking and caps then, coming up and <laughs> their tweed caps and their tweed caps, yeah. <laughs> and then the guys then they chase him, he gets captured. Then then we have the we have the dream sequence with the uh the guy on the top of the building, then we have the dream sequence with the uh I don't know the guy who thinks his wife is cheating on him. Mm -hmm, then yeah. we have the little Which boy. That's when we really start getting into some horror, right? We get the snake man, the stop motion president. animation so, uh, snake man. That's when things pick up for me. I, I felt like that's what that that's we were moving along and, mm -hmm. and gradually getting more and more uh, bigger and bigger in terms of mm -hmm. his powers. But any comments about the writing? Although besides the idea that yeah, he could have made his money and ran away or uh, that nuclear war is sort of formulate crystal are you what you like the story right i do yeah i don't have a problem with it i mean i think his personality type isn't one to like actually i kind of feel like he's like an aladdin type where it's like he's okay with just having enough to make ends meet as opposed to making waves yeah. and making a ton of money and and the more money you make the more attention you draw to yourself so i think he's mm -hmm. trying to fly under the radar but not doing the best job i don't yeah. know mm. yeah i feel like like max von Sydow and some of those guys would keep an eye on things like that who's mm -hmm. winning big and just to, and some of the shadier types would you know so he does like crystal said he doesn't really want to draw that much attention to himself that's what right. i got from it yeah I just feel like the, the overall, the big story doesn't feel believable to me. You've got oh. the press. So the, <laughs> and I, and I, you know, to the point, to the point where I misremembered this, I, I remembered this as the bad guys were putting the nightmares into the president's head to manipulate him. And that's what I told my wife it was about. Oh. And then I realized I'm watching hmm. this like, oh, no, I just totally made that up on the oh. spot. But I argue it's a better story because what we have is the president has nightmares about nuclear war. Why wouldn't he? And uh, so he's going to try to come up with a treaty that will stop nuclear war. And this so upsets the, the bad guys in the military and the CIA that they want him dead. Well, you know what? I don't know why they want nuclear war because they'll die too. But okay, let's go with that. They just love war because they're evil. If they want the guy dead, it's a simple matter of, hey, Mr. President, try this soft drink. Drinks, dies. No, they got to do this super that, elaborate that's, thing. That's, we're gonna we're gonna go into his brain and we're gonna do all this. It's no, like no wonder you, you guys never killed Castro. You're way you, too elaborate. Uh, Bill, no, <laughs> you're not a very I good know, bad guy, there Bill. Would, there you're not. Be. <laughs> you're not a good bad guy because I know. you you you're He's thinking all like all you're thinking, nice guy, you you're just, thinking yeah. this big, and the stupidest thing any one of them could do is be like, "I'm gonna poison the president." And then I'm going to go to jail forever. It Killing him in his dream, they just think he has a heart. It's like the best and simplest and easiest way. See, to... while you, Crystal well, Cleveland, yeah. would be exactly the kind of super villainous yeah. who like captures Batman and Truth. then ties him to this ridiculously elaborate death trap and then leaves <laughs> to go rob a bank, allowing him to escape from it because it's way got way too many moving parts. I wish I had some popcorn to watch this one. <laughs> yes, yeah. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So... I don't think they're want. He doesn't want nuclear war. I think they don't want the treaty. Way, he's the bad guy yeah. doing bad things with mm -hmm. good intentions. He thinks yeah. that if we don't keep the nukes, that they're going to lie to us and we'll yeah. we'll be taken over or whatever. We'll be the ones destroyed. So he's not so much Which, rooting for a nuclear war as he's mm -hmm. rooting for deterrent. Yeah. 
Is it more than no, nothing you're right. Superman for? Yeah. You're right. And and that would be mm -hmm. that would be better if they portrayed him like that, but instead it's he's Christopher Plummer being evil Christopher Plummer. Oh my and he, god. He, he does a great job at it. You know, he, he just looks he's, happy. He's he's glad oh, that he has to kill the president. He, he lives playing, for this. He's playing such a good psychopath. Like his mm -hmm. eyes are just like nothing and then he has a slight smile yes. in the corners of his mouth like who do i kill today and how do i do oh, it mm -hmm. God. i love um, my job <laughs> all right so the story well before we get into the actors though, i wanted to talk a little bit about uh the music which according to the the uh, producers they use this they got maurice jarre or jar to mm -hmm. he's french and but there's no accent on the e so i don't know exactly how you pronounce it, to do the music. And for them, that was the big get that they could use to mm. attract other names. Because mm. this guy has, he's a three-time Oscar winner and was nominated six other times. And, Bill, he also did the music for Eyes Without a Face. Oh, cool. Wow. Oh, Jews. wow. So this guy is like a legend. Mm. Uh, musical is. scores, in a way, this was totally different because he decided he wanted to do this yeah. sort of electro, electronic, that it would fit it, and I don't. For me, it I don't agree. It didn't do anything I, for me. So. I'm, I'll take nothing. Hey, Eyes Without a Face is my favorite movie, and I love the score there. I mean, the guy is a genius, and hey, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, mm. But I don't think this was a success as a score. So yeah, he won for Lawrence of Arabia, Doctor Zhivago. Oh, beautiful! And oh, those are great yeah. scores. Dang, those are some of the I best. Mean, yeah, and then was nominated for things like uh, us. Uh, Original song for Life and Times of Judge Ray Bean. So they hired this guy expecting Dr. Zhivago, and then they got Timmy with his synthesizer in the basement. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if we go that far, but anyway. No, but it's it's also but I'm with you. Low but, I, but I think it's interesting that from their point of view, the fact that they got him signed early, that that allowed them to go and get, you know, they could throw that out. You know, we got this uh, two-time Oscar winner or three time uh, when he got the yeah. third one in 1985. So he didn't have three yet, but uh, uh, we got the guy at this quality on this movie. So, you know, mm -hmm. you know that's probably and, true. Cause he described the plot of this to, to Max von Sydow, these, these really great actors and great movies. And it's like, and then the guy turns into a Cobra man. And you're like, I don't think this is for well, me. But, but we got Max this guy doing the score. The I don't think somebody got told about the Cobra man. <laughs> <laughs> in the pitch, I don't think. Probably not. Okay. Well, I wanted to get him in there because uh, I just thought nah, that's, he's, that's he's a, a good, legendary guy, amazing. and it's not yeah. obvious that he did the, the music. So, Dennis. Dennis. Quaid. 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 Yeah, Three look how young he is. He's a kid. You yeah. couldn't find one of him smiling, Coil. Jeff. That's kind well, of he's got a little he's got kind of a smirk up there. Uh, and the bottom one he's with uh George Went, mm -hmm. aka no, Stephen AKA King. Charles Prince. Which that was that was another thing. I don't know why that sequence, that character is even in the movie. Um it, it, Mr. He should Exposition. Be, that's all that's he's Mr. All Exposition, but he's he's a, a fiction writer. It'd be like if Stephen King suddenly shows up and starts spilling the beans about some big government thing that's going on. Where would it's he have found I, out I about it? What was it's his name in this movie? Thing. Stefan Bing. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. Oh wow! Um, I want to. That's that's a great idea. I want to steal that stuff. <laughs> Let me write. Um, pen on me. Well, and he ends up. The reason that he's in there, the information that he divulges, doesn't really. Uh, um, Does do anything. I, there's no way of knowing how he figured that out. He's right. the one that had. I got the inside information that they're trying to assassinate the president. What? And, and why a, is why is he gathering? Because you're a fiction writer doing research on this. Yeah. yeah. Now notice, say, Crystal. I, I got an inside with, guy in the. You know. Notice, Crystal. When they decide to kill this guy, they don't do some crazy Doctor Fives thing that has like 14 moving parts. They just shoot him. <laughs> but because he's kind of nobody, though. That's why. Oh wait, yeah. he's Charles Prince. He's Stephen Charles King. Prince. Stephen, he's not Stephen King. He's Charles Prince. But what was the? Uh -huh. what, yeah, get it. It's funny. It's a lesser, a lesser. It's funny. Yeah, that's that is funny. 
Mm-hmm. Well, for all I know, I, I, Stephen Quaid King is, is a Quaid spook. Is good in this. Quaid, yeah. is, Quaid is good in this, and he does a a, a, a good job when it gets past the the lady killing smile. He does yeah. a decent job acting. With we even we even well, wait, wait, well, kind of okay. See, bit. Jeff has a problem with the the lady killing smile, yeah. but that's that's his charm. That's the whole point. Like he's got. It's have not it. meant for you, Jeff. That's yeah, nice. yeah. It's not meant for you. Dennis well, Quaid without his lady killing smile is like Tarzan without his loin. I really, I, mean, I, I really like that scene where, which Jeff he likes that too, but... me. <laughs> I ignored that part. Uh, <laughs> where where uh, uh, Alex Gardner and Novotny meet. And Novotny's kind of giving him a hard time for, you know, running out on the study in Chicago. And Quaid's giving it, Alex Gardner's giving it back to him. And then you, you, you think they're about ready to erupt in a fight. And then they both smile and shake hands and go, go, it's good to see you. Yeah. I, you I can't stay mad at Quaid. Yeah. <laughs> he, his teeth glinted and they went, oh, baby. <laughs> little sparkle in his eye. Yeah. Um, all righty. Well, let's uh, at the end. Oh, yeah. And then on the other spectrum, we got uh, this guy. Is Warriors, incredible. come out and play. What I've a genius. He what is. a genius actor, yeah. Yep, he's the best. What a he's awesome. punchable face. David Patrick Kelly. Mm. Yeah. And what year was he Warriors? Could... Is it the same year? Warriors was, was 70. Oh, a 70s, okay. I'm sorry. But late 70. 70s, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. dumb now. He he can make you dislike him, like that. Real, mm-hmm. it doesn't take long to establish, not the hero, you know. Yeah, I think Jeff Crystal Pat brought out last time that we yeah. talked that he was in the Crow. He played a was oh, it? Yeah. I can't remember his name in the. Crow, oh, I can't but. remember the name either. But he was uh, the devil, like he's reading from the Bible at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T Bird, super creepy. T Bird, yeah. T Bird, that's it. But that T- that okay. Some of the best acting. I've seen, and I mean this, is when he's eating that meal and they're talking mm-hmm. about yeah, that. Yeah. And the way he just is eating, he's like, oh, well, you know, it's just too bad. And it, But it's just the way he does he's it. He's just totally dismissive. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm Dennis Quaid I, right there. I eat when I'm depressed, or what does he say? Something like, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even though he's he's physically much smaller than, than or seems to be much smaller than Quaid, he's he's got this air of menace about him. If mm-hmm. if if the movie had been made back then, he would have been a great Rorschach for Watchmen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know? oh yeah. And then once he's in um, the dreams, he's having a great time. He's cutting loose now. You yeah. know, he's not he's not the little weirdo that everybody picks on. Now he's a superhero. Now he's mm-hmm. master of this universe. He had that mem- memorable role in uh, the Adventures of Ford Fairlane. I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't. I was going to say. I, was, I, don't, I don't know what that, that uh, is. But he had. He was in uh, Twin Peaks. In yeah. The, the, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Twin Peaks in uh, season two, and uh, you mentioned the Crow at John Wick. Dude's amazing. He makes you hate him in this movie. Yeah. And he do, he looks like he's not even trying to. Wow! Him, I know. Uh, I just I know I keep going back to the eating scene, but just the way he he, he didn't smack, but just the way he chewed the food even mm-hmm. bothered me. And oh. I'm like, Ugh. just kind of pulls a piece of lettuce out of it with his yeah, teeth. Yeah, just mm-hmm. really bothered. I'm like, how is he bothering me so badly? And he's not even smacking. Like he kept his mouth closed. He wasn't mm-hmm. like gross. It was just mm-hmm. angry or something. He's angry eating. <laughs> And arrogant. Yeah. He knows, he knows what he did. And he, knows he knows he got away with it. Yeah. And he knows he the almost, you know, uh, yeah. Christopher Plummer has his back on everything. So he has no fear of being caught or or whatever. So he's just, just tot- like I said, totally dismissing uh, Quaid. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's uh, Bill. There's the uh, glowing nunchucks. That's... Yep. Yep. <laughs> Listen to my heartbeat. <laughs> to tell you how crazy the 70s were, I, I actually had a friend who brought nunchucks to school and as part of like show and tell. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. That's how nuts thing were. And, and they don't even let like, you do that anymore. No, they okay. don't. And they hurt. So I got <laughs> one for you. Uh-oh. 1960, about. 
I was uh, born. Thank you. My wife's my wife's brother. Um, when he went to he went to school, and at lunch, I think he was like in junior high. At lunch, he walked up town and bought a shotgun. <laughs> and then he walked back to school and took the shotgun in to show everybody, look at the new gun I got. And, oh, yeah, that's cool. Everybody looked at it, and then they put it back in the corner, went on with class. That's a Death Leopard just... song. Yeah. What's that? And that's like, and like, that was it? That was it. Yeah. No big deal. Oh, no, yeah. There no, was, yeah. It, no. Wow. Especially in a, in a rural town, you know, everybody had shotguns, farmers yeah. to you know, hunt and, you know. The first anyway. day of hunting season was day off school. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I I worked at when I was uh, in my job before I retired. And I was going around working with different companies. There were companies that would take off the first day of deer season. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, <laughs> not big companies, but companies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, all right. Off track again, as I always do. So. <laughs> David Patrick Kelly. And here goes Kate Capshaw. Kate. I so feel Kate, like she wasn't given enough to do in this. Like she disappears. I thought she was yeah. going to be a bigger part of the ending. Than she, she really does was. until he, uh, she, she, she lets him in the back door. That's, that's when she comes back in, kind of. Uh, but she almost got enemy. killed in a phone booth in the middle of a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. puts Come a phone inside. booth in the middle of a parking lot? Who does that? Who? Hollywood, that's it. So I don't know. Anybody have a, a memorable role for her? I'm trying to think. I mean, she's Mrs. Mrs. Think, Spielberg. She's she was good. Funny. I liked her in yeah. Temple of Doom. I thought she was funny yeah. and, yep. and uh, a good foil for Indy. You know. Yeah, a lot of people said she was annoying in that movie. I thought she was oh, perfectly no. sane. That's how I'd be acting if they were giving yeah, me eagle yeah. soup and monkey, monkey brains. brains and. <laughs> and, and the way she screamed in the in the caves with the spiders and everything, you should see how my wife screams when a spider about the size of the head of a pin shows up anywhere in the house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I liked her in that. Well, Didn't she like her as much as the other one. But. She hasn't done anything in twenty years. As oh wow. Uh, well, uh, she probably doesn't need to. Well, oh, I'm sure she doesn't. I, and family and stuff. So. Yeah. All right, and then we have hmm. three. Now, three. Great. these guys, these guys. These guys. Christopher Christopher Plummer won an Oscar. Uh, Max von Sydow was nominated for two Oscars, and Eddie Albert was nominated for two Oscars. Hmm. And they all joined together for this movie. And they were all great in this too. Yeah. 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 Max, I wish Max had been in it longer. Yeah. Um, but, so, you know, Plumber's got to kill someone. Mm -hmm. so. Well, you, you know, he tries to stand up to him. Right. Yeah. Why would you do that? I mean, I was, like, in these movies, when, when someone with great power, like a mob boss or the head of the CIA or just any, any character who can have you killed on a whim, you don't go up to them and say, I'm on to you and mm -hmm. I'm going to tell everyone about it. I'm like, yeah. just take a gun and shoot yourself. Cause <laughs> it, it <laughs> seems I sadly them. underestimated your, <laughs> you, you tried to give him some different, uh, some different feedback or a different story, but he just was like, no, no, no. I, mm -hmm. no, he no. gave him that, uh, psychopathic smile. And, oh, yeah. you're going to kill me. All right. Monsters. Uh, the snake, hellhounds, hell hellhounds hell hell on hounds. my tail. They look cool. The it's dogs. a simple effect, but it's it's a cool effect. It's a neat effect. Mm -hmm. I know if I saw him in a dark alleyway somewhere, oh, I would just yeah. I'd give up on life. Just at that. Oh, moment. this is when we talked about the fact that the dogs were supposed to wear costumes. Yeah, yeah. I actually, right. I, I <laughs> saw right. some pictures somewhere. I should have I should have tried to pull them out where uh, somebody um, made. A costume for the dogs to mm -hmm. make them look like evil hellhounds, and it looked to me like there was like polyurethane, you know, some kind of foam or something built. Killer shrews, yeah. It, and uh, the dogs would have nothing to do with it. It never <laughs> works. It never works. 
I put my cats in costumes. They just flop right over, you know. The snake man in the middle looks like he stepped on a thumbtack. <laughs> a Lego, yeah. Yeah, or a Lego. Yeah. There. I thought those, that, was, that stuff was creepy to me. That snakes, snakes are one of my mm. things. And, and you know, again, low, I mean, low budget, low budget stop motion is not going to be as smooth as Ray Harryhausen and Jim Danforth. But that's okay because the, the, the criticism of stop motion has always been that it's got that jerky quality that's not real. Okay, great. It's a dream. It's not real. Yeah, it works in the dream dream world. But it's what I don't understand is how that mm-hmm. mask didn't move at all. Like they couldn't make it move at all, and then they could have just had someone's hand in it. I mean, there's there was yeah. a lot that they could have done well, those to are, fake some of it. Yeah, probably if they had more money. Yeah. They oh, probably yeah. I bet they had a mechanism to make it work and it didn't work. Because you hear that yeah. a lot. It's like when we built Rawhead Rex, he was supposed to be able to open his mouth and enunciate and do all instead he just sort of stared there with his mouth yeah. wide open. It doesn't always um, work. Well, that, and we don't have a picture of that, but the snake man, the actual walking snake man. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was a suit guy, and that was, uh, uh, what was his name? Larry Cedar. What else Plays is him? Larry Cedar. Uh, he's done some other uh, well-known hmm. suit acting, I think. Well, let's see. He was in Deadwood. Uh it's got over 200 credits. I should have looked this up ahead of time. That's too many to look through and figure out what he was <laughs> in that we would re- remember him from. But I think he did more uh, things like that. I wonder, was it just because he had a, you know the right build for it, that tall and thin kind of thing? Kind of looks like maybe that would be it. Um, wow it's he's just like everywhere he's got a very distinctive face so i see i can see him being the parts in a lot of mm-hmm. stuff uh what am i looking at here ghost warrior no let's see the hidden okay the jack the jack shoulder hidden um i think so from the 80s yes from the 80s uh with uh, kyle mclaughlin kyle mclaughlin yeah Oh, wow. this guy. And now that I see his face, yeah, he's got a face you could do things with. Yeah. Uh, Chud, too. Uh-huh. Oh, Chud, too. Bud the Chud. Mm-hmm. The Chud be long, good. He's got, he's got kind of a long <laughs> face, expressive eyes, kind of <laughs> eyes that are inset. I mean, yeah, if I were a makeup person and this is, they said, you got to turn this guy into blah, blah, blah. They're like, okay. We got a good canvas here. And you know what? He's probably also someone smart enough to figure out, yeah, they can do a lot of cool things to my face. And uh, I'm not going to bitch and complain when I'm sitting in a makeup chair for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Someone like that can work for a long time. Like Doug Jones. Like Doug Jones. Mm -hmm. Like Doug Jones. If you got a good attitude, there aren't too many people on earth with a better attitude than Doug Jones. Yep. Best hugs ever. Yes, oh, I, I you love know, him. listen, people, people who don't know what we're talking about, Doug Jones, well, if he offers you a hug, take it. Mm. And um, it is like so a religious loved. experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't explain it. If he wanted to start a cult or something, he'd be very successful. At so thank goodness <laughs> he seems to be a very decent, good guy because he could use that power for evil. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, cool monsters. Small part, but yeah, but done. Um, and so we we got talking a little bit about the uh, the uh, stop motion. Um, well, first these effects. Now, the, the one thing that really bothered me is that rolling the, the green the fire rolling there. pin or whatever <laughs> it was rolling up behind her. That just I didn't get that. I think it was supposed to be a shockwave of flames. Sure. But... It's like a nuke. Yeah, it was a nuke. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah that, uh, yeah. I thought that sold it okay. I mean, again, yeah. that's it's yeah. just imagining. In real life, she would have been killed by the you know, heat wave mm-hmm. first and the shock. Yeah, whatever. It'd be better. But well, it's a dream. Not much better. Guys, it's too. a dream. It's a dream anyway. It's a dream. It's like he's. So I love that crooked staircase. That I thought was that... impressive. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen mm-hmm. more of that kind of practical nightmarish effect. That that sort, sort of thing. Of Salvador Dali esque. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you're possible. running, but it's like you're on a treadmill. Uh, and... yeah. 
it's all crooked. You know, how do you run down that thing? Every every step is mm-hmm. different. It I don't know, but they made were me uncomfortable butt. watching him go down the stairs. So the the center picture here. Uh, hey, look at his heart! I found in this guy's chest over here. The, the <laughs> yeah, the president's nightmare that uh, Alex Gardner and what was David Patrick Kelly's name like? Oh God. Uh, Tommy Ray. Oh, there you go. Yep. Tommy Ray Glatman. Enter his nightmare. But that's like a, a really nice miniature set behind that. Hmm. Um, done with, uh, I suppose it's a, the, is it a matte then? Might be a matte painting. Uh, yeah. Hmm. But, oh, I was just thinking it was shit. I didn't know. Anyway. Yeah. It was cool stuff. So I, I, anyway. I love that stuff. And and we mentioned some of the people, I think, um, and this is interesting. There's a huge long list of people in, under special effects and visual effects on IMDb. But on the movie, the, the, the credits pre, you know, before the movie had uh, Craig Reardon, special makeup mm-hmm. guy, and also Peter Kieran as visual effects creator. Uh, and then a lot of other people, Jim Al Pearl, who we've talked about before, I think, was that with uh, Dinosaur Planet or Planet of Dinosaurs? Uh, and um, I think there was you know, another variety one of other there. people. Another thing that was kind of cool was the uh, dream tunnel effect. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, when he went, mm-hmm. went into the dream, and that was done by a guy named Dennis Pies. It seemed like it was a different color for each person. Yeah, it changed. It mm-hmm. changed. I thought yeah, that was okay. kind of cool. Uh, what did I just see? I wanted to be... Oh, so <clears throat> some of the other people involved in this film, um, and I'm pretty sure Brian Tofano was the cinematographer uh, who also did like train spotting... Uh, Blade Runner. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, well, uh, Shallow, let's see, Billy Elliot. So anyway, he's got a lot of credits there over over a, a nice... Yeah, the, the effects there. people were some good, good one. Ernest Farino, who did, um, he, he did a lot of good movie stuff, but he also published the magazine FXRH, which was directly oh, yeah. responsible for me getting involved as much as I did in film as, as a young man. So just just a good solid team, making some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen um, anyone cosplay as the Snake Man, but I'll bet if you did, you would get a lot of folks more than you probably think who would like. Oh my God! I know. Yeah. I, yeah, I love that movie when I was a kid. Yeah. So impractical it's, is the problem. It's like oh, it would be oh, hard to. Yeah, don't do this for Dragon Con. You will pass out in the Atlantic. Yeah. Heat. And just to add to the uh, folks involved in this movie, Richard Halsey did the editing, who uh, won an Oscar for editing with Rocky. Mm-hmm. So a lot of a lot of good crew, and which yeah. I think is another one of those things that you find sometimes on low budget movies. They have they they manage to get good crew people. Yeah. Um, well, this came right. out from a major studio too, so yeah, it might have been a low budget for them, but they they had the chops yeah, yeah. to put a good team together. Paramount, right? Did I say yeah. Paramount to begin with? Mm, don't remember. Could be, maybe? Question mark. No, <laughs> it's a it possibility. Was, <laughs> it was Zup, Zupnik Curtis Enterprises. I know what I was thinking about for Paramount. That was uh, Dr. and Mr. Hyde. Zutnik Curtis Enterprises, Bella Productions, Chevy Chase Films, distributed by 20th Century Fox. Ah. Oh. Huh. So I don't know. Chevy? Was it our Chevy Chase? I have no idea. If that's <laughs> what, uh, I didn't look the company up, so I'm going to claim the towns here. Hmm. Um, Zutnik and Curtis. Curtis was the, uh, Bruce Kahn Curtis was the producer. Hmm. Anyway. Supnik was an executive producer. So, anyway, uh, here we go. I think 
any other comments we want to make about this? Feels like they set it up fine for a sequel, but no sequel ever came. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it made twenty, if it really made twenty five million on a six million dollar investment, that's a pretty good return. Well, but they did kill and... both of them. I mean, they did kill both of them. Well, yeah, they that, killed the I bad like the guys. I like the ending. Yeah. Uh, when uh, uh, Alex Gardner kills, mm-hmm. was it Bob Bear or Bill Bear? Oh, he said, uh, I'll, "I'll just take care of it, Mister President. If you don't, Bob you know, Blair. I'll, I'll yeah. take care of it." Well, he's dead. For sure. Oh no, don't worry about it. He's dead for sure. But I think you could come up with a way to bring back the other guy. You know? Yeah. If you die, well, if you die in someone's dreams, who's to say? Who? What are the rules? Do the rules say you? They can't said some, that. Little, Kept little alive in a secret Colorado laboratory. Yeah, stuck around somewhere like Baltimore. Oh, I know who I wanted to mention too. The the two bad guys, the muscle were, guys, that were uh, like Christopher Plummer's henchmen. Yeah, mm-hmm. Peter Jason and Chris Mulkey. <clears throat> yeah, Peter Jason was uh, one of the leads in Prince of Darkness. Right? Oh, he was in a lot of car. Uh, That's cool. Carpenter, a lot of movies, carpenter yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, and Chris <laughs> Mulkey's in a ton of stuff too. He's I think just, Chris Mulkey was in The Hidden, if I'm not mistaken. The Hidden. The Hidden. The Hidden. Some cross <laughs> pollination there. Um, but they're they're the kind of guys you definitely recognize. Yeah. But you have a you have a hard time placing. He too had uh oh yeah, he was in Twin Peaks. He played Hank Jennings. Hmm. Uh anyway, a lot of supporting parts. So all right. <sighs> Last comments, final comments. Great movie. Great movie. A fun movie. Yeah. I, I, you know, I it didn't. It, my expectations were a little too high going into this, but that aside, I think it's a fun movie. It's a fun '80s film. Mm-hmm. Can't imagine anyone coming away and viscerally disliking it. So, yeah, give it a yeah. shot. I, I think, um, it, yeah, I think this is a messy for real. Okay. It's cool. All righty. We do have some feedback. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, we do. So, <laughs> the first I was one, like... <laughs> I was just wondering what happened to Dallas. And here he comes up with a comment on Night of the Comet. Yeah, where episode, the hell you been, dude? Yeah. So, uh, Lost Chad, in space. Read that one. Okay. This is from Dallas Nostromo. <clears throat> Real name, I hear. Congratulations on making it to your 200th episode. Frankly, I never thought you'd make it, as I assume most of you would have been incarcerated long before reaching it. (laughs) Fair. Also, now I remember why. And anyway, also great. As far as you know, Dallas, I never was. Uh, Convicted? No, no. You don't get caught, duh. Doesn't count Uh if you don't don't get caught. Also, a great film, and I really enjoyed listening to you all discuss it. Here's to another 200 episodes and life on the outside. <laughs> life on the outside. Waka waka. Love you, Dallas, buddy. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's funny. I literally, I was just thinking about him. How come we haven't heard from Dallas? I'll have to... I haven't gotten any bad horror dad jokes in a while from him. So. Oh, <laughs> well, that that'll well, live. Time to pick. Time to pick up the pace, Dallas. Uh, okay, we have a few comments on uh, number 201, Chopping Mall, uh, from Chad White. Uh, Bill? Love the podcast. It's great to see you all. Short and sweet. Yep. yep. Yeah, <clears throat> it is. Then from Mike Zatz. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. And then thank one you, from Chad. Mike Zatz. Uh, Crystal, uh, let's rotate okay. here. Crystal, you, you right. did the whole improv thing, Bill. We'll give Crystal That's a true. I can shut up for a while. <laughs> Wow. I know you guys have been at this a while, but perhaps Jeff erred in his mention of Dreamscape being number 2002. Perhaps. Perhaps. I did. It just kind of. (laughs) Where have I been for the missing 1800 plus episodes? I said the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we were, I guess we were dreaming. Just kidding. Oh, mighty voice of decades of horror. Santos was right. That is one sexy voice. Wow. Yeah, oh. some people have smiles. Other people have the voice. A the real voice. face for radio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I heard that a lot in radio and television. 
Do you want me to read the second part of that? Or yep, yep. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, have not seen upcoming episode number 202, Dreamscape, since it came out in 19... Uh, well, he, that says 1884, but 1984. Oh, my God, it's catching. <laughs> is, it, is, is it another symptom of another variant? I mean 1984. Ah, uh, I just had to wait. I just had to wait. Like, I will have to catch this again for your upcoming podcast. Again, stellar work by the Gru crew on Chopping Mall. And I was happy the rest of the crew to educate Mr. Moore on the legend that was Tom Carvel. Now, let's talk Mr. Softy, shall we? <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Let's Tom go back to Carvel. Tom Carvel. So we got, <laughs> we got lots of comments about Tom Carvel with links to commercials. I think Jerry Chandler sent them, ah, Mike ah, Zatt sent them, sure. someone else sent them. So I, I, I spent, you know, a good hour watching Tom Carvel commercials <laughs> and learned. <laughs> what, are you, what are you, Cookie Puss today? Mm, yeah. That sounds so good. Cookie Puss, Cupie Puss for Valentine's Day, Cookie, cookie Opus for uh, St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's, yeah. Cookie Hug Me O Bear. Uh, I think it was St. Patrick's Day. And then for Halloween and, and uh, uh, Thanksgiving, I think, was Dumpy the Pumpkin. And then for Easter, gross. there was Bunny Robert and Bunny Robin. Bunny Robin? Mm. Boy or a girl, you know. You had to, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Both of those. Tom the Turkey, Priscilla and John, Thanks, Flower man. Basket Cake, and Fudgy the Whale. Fudgy the Whale. Which Fudgy Bill talked whale. about. Uh, before yeah, us being the, the uh, they they Santa made Claus. multiple things out of the same mold. Yeah, yeah, they made the oh, same cakes. If you if you turned a whale sideways, it. his tail with the flukes on it became Santa Claus's hat. Oh, two little balls on his top. That's smart yeah. though. <laughs> that's, oh, that, oh, that's oh, they didn't miss so smart. smart. It would cost money to make yeah. another pan when you can just yep. flip it upside down. Bunny Robert and Bunny Robin were the same bunny with different frosting. That was yes. the genius oh, of Tom Carvel. Yeah. Uh, and these were all and he, ice cream and he saved money by doing his own yes. ads, which were cream horrible. Cream, yeah. mm -hmm. Soft serve horrible. ice cream for those of you in the parts of the country that don't have uh, Carvel. You'd have a uh, layer of ice cream. Franchises. You'd have whipped cream for the uh, the frosting. Then you'd have a layer of the crumbly cake stuff that comes on those mm. those cake pops, whatever they are. You know, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. then another layer of. of and it was lowered into a vat of liquid nitrogen until it yeah. approached absolute zero. And you had See? to let it sit out in the hot sun for hours <laughs> before you might be able or, to hit it with a meat cleaver and cut yeah. it. it was right angle there. drill, you might be able to, or a hammer drill, you might be able to yeah. chunk hey, the piece off. It was the did best. You, guys have, you have anybody down in your area that did the uh, uh, liquid nitrogen ice cream? Mm, oh, yeah. Dots? Maybe. There was a guy up, there was a guy in uh, Iowa, at, uh, actually at Iowa State that started a company called Nitro Cream, that they used to do that. The physics department every year mm -hmm. would have an ice cream sale that they made. They, they super cooled it super fast with liquid nitrogen. That's what Dippin' makes, Dots is. is just which oh, makes is? Okay. very small crystals and very yeah. smooth, but very dense. If you want a brain freeze, mm -hmm. eat, eat Nitro Cream or, or something. Similar. Or just liquid nitrogen, it'll do the job. But it's good. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that would, that, that would actually freeze your brain. I was just having a comment with uh, my uh, talking with my grandson that's in seventh grade. He had um, dry ice in mm -hmm. science class. Oof, that they yeah. played with so fun. lots anyway. of fun, lots of fun. Until All someone right, gets their I fingers go. frostbitten. Yeah, but there are no Carvels in Iowa, so I had no idea what mm -hmm. you guys were talking about. They're mostly East Coast. It looked like to me. Yeah, mostly northeast coast and Florida. Florida was so, inundated with yeah. Carvel shots. I think yeah. uh, when I was looking at their map, I think New Jersey and New York had yeah. tons of them. You could use one of those cakes to cool down your house on a hot summer day. <laughs> I, re I, I remember <laughs> listening it. to the Carvel cool down, turn the van on. <laughs> yeah, and thinking uh, I used to think that. Man, that guy could be the voice of the thing from the Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. He's selling me ice cream cakes. Well, his ice creams are hilarious. I mean, well, there's one it's time. It's slobbering he's time. He's it's clobbering time with Cookie Puss. <laughs> it's slobbering time. That's right. 
and one of them he's singing a song and he's just he just screws it up and just keeps <laughs> right on cares going, not. You know? it doesn't no. matter. <laughs> one take time. two never, that would cost money so. i've never seen the anyway commercials, so all right Roger well, we appreciate, appreciate all the people who commented on uh, carvel's and uh also mike Zatz, chad and dallas nostromo thank you really appreciate the comments Thanks, keep them coming thank you. uh be sure to uh subscribe like mm -hmm. comment again words. again comment some more some more some more for real because because we read the comments and we mm -hmm. talk about them so uh that's it for this episode but every two weeks or so we will focus on a specific <laughs> yeah. film yeah. released between 1980 yes, and 1989 yeah. <laughs> yeah for anybody who's noticed our schedule is a little wonky lately but we will get back on track next up is one chosen by crystal what are, well what i bet it's doing? a classic yeah, i'm sure this is gonna be i bet it's good i bet it's really <laughs> no, it's gotta be good crystal wouldn't steer us wrong no howling two your sister is a werewolf oh, How, no no okay. that's wrong Ow. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. i right. did cat I quit. take it all back <laughs> Your sister. I've, I've had well, enough. This is the last straw. I'm embarrassed. Rue believers. I'm embarrassed. This is available on Amazon. So you too can watch this to prepare for the podcast. Uh, Ollie, on Amazon, it's I think it's, or maybe that's, I can't remember which is which. If it's IMDb or Amazon, one of them lists it as Howling 2 Stitterba Werewolf Bitch. <laughs> which is a much better title. Clearly. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, it's it would lead me to watch it more. Your sister is a were werewolf. Sounds more like uh, my mother was a serial killer or something. Like yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. All right. Sylvester Stallone. So <laughs> everybody stay in touch. Uh, also, you can get all our podcasts on podcast apps. So cool. check out the audio if that's your uh, choice. Um, all right. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s. As only decades of horror can do it. Yep. You said Until we meet again. Yep. Yay. Bye, Good folks. night. <laughs>